Hello, this is the second in a series of in-depth wire mod tutorials. In the previous episode, we learned the basics of the advanced pod controller by building a WASD car. In this video, we will be utilizing the same frame, adding features to that, say, to that car, such as brakes and realistic steering. Now, as you can see, over here, I have already pre-constructed the frame before the video. The first thing you're going to want to notice before we start building is that this wheel is not a real wheel. It is a simple prop. This, pr this prop can be found in the PHX transportation props. The reason I'm only using props is because true wheels tend to sink into the ground when you try to make them steer realistically. This has been a problem with wire wheels for several updates. Now, pull out each now the first thing we're going to want to do is add the axes to the bar. So, pull out the axis precision tool, setting the friction to 7, and then axis it to the crossbar, like so. Repeat with the other one. Like so. There. Now we're going to want these to turn together. This is simple enough. Let's get out the rope. Make sure it's rigid, and rope these two props together at their end. Now, as you can see, these turn together now that they've been roped. Next, we're going to apply the wheels. Setting all, set all axis settings to zero, and axis it to the plates. There you go. Next, we're going to need the advanced pod controller. This is a very important tool if you're building a vehicle. Place it anywhere on the vehicle, like so, and link it to the seat by right clicking and right clicking. Right click the pod first and then right click the seat to link. It should say Advanced Pod Linked in your text window. Next, we're going to apply a thruster for our forward and backward propulsion, since we're not using real wheels. Apply this to the back. Okay. Now, pulling out a gate arithmetic, make it subtract, and place it on the vehicle in a convenient location. This will give the thruster the multipliers 1 or negative 1, so it knows to apply thrust forward or apply thrust backward. As we learned in the last tutorial, we're going to wire A from the subtract to the advanced pod output W. And B from the subtract to the advanced pod output S. Then wire A from the thruster to the, to the subtract, so that the thruster receives 1 or negative 1 as its value when you press W or S. Now that we have that out of the way, we, we are now able to move forward and backward. Now we need to take care of the steering. To do that, let's pull out the wire hydraulic tool. Make sure it is a non-fixed hydraulic, and right-click to draw a hydraulic bar all the way across in a straight line, and then left click to place the controller. Repeat for the other side. Okay. And left click. There we go. Now, note the length of the hydraulics. It's about 20. So, in order for these bars to default back to the back to forward when nothing is being pressed, we're going to need a constant value of about 20. For simplicity, we should round it to 20 and place it. Somewhere convenient. Like right there. There we go. Now let's get out the math. Pull out a gate arithmetic, multiply. Place it next to, on both sides, the constant value chip. You can arrange these gates in any way you want. This way seem, makes, seems to make the most sense. 
to me. Now, pull place two arithmetic add gates in relative locations to the multiplier gates. Like so. Now let's get wiring. First thing we're going to need to wire is we're going to need to wire A from the add to the multiplier. Or the constant value. Sorry. Repeat this on the other gate. Now, we're going to wire B from the add to the multiply. Repeat this with the other gate. Now let's start wiring the multiplies. Wire A from the multiply to the constant value. And do the same with the other multiply gate. Now this is where things start getting changed. Since we're going to want the car to move right when we press D, we're going to want the hydraulic on the left to increase its length. To do that, let's make it so that the multiply triggers when you press D. So wire B from the left side multiply to advance pot output D. And for the right side multiply, wire B to the advanced pot output A. Now, basically what's happening here, we learned in the last video, when you press a key, it outputs as 1, and when it's not being pressed, it outputs as 0. Then 20 times 0 equals 0. 20, 20 plus 0 equals 20. When you press A, it outputs 1. 20 times 1 equals 20, and 20 plus 20 equals 40. Now that we learn this, let's wire the hydraulics to the adds. That way they receive the value either 20 or 40, depending on which key you press. Alright. Now, let's drive it around a little. To demonstrate what we have just done. W and S will control the thruster on the back. A and D will control the hydraulics. W, D, A. And there you go. Realistic steering. It's not very hard. Now you have four directions of motion, and it looks cool too. Next we're going to need to add brakes. Everything gets simpler from here, so don't worry. Pull out the weld constraint latch, select the prop you're going to want to weld, which is in this case is the wheel, select the prop you're going to weld it to, the base, and then click again to place the controller. Repeat this four times for each wheel on your vehicle, or however many wheels you have. Now, wire activate from the weld latch to the advanced pod controller, space, or whichever key you want to use to break your car. Okay. Now, let's demonstrate what that looks like. I press space and stop the car. As you can see, it welded. Next, for the headlights. Pull up the wire light tool and place them on the front of your car, or the back of your car if you're nuts. Now, get the constant value and set the first one to 255, which is the default brightness for, for wire lights. Now, to achieve, to achieve the white color, we're going to need to wire red, green, and blue to the constant value of 255. This outputs the, vo the color vector 255, 255, 255, which is white. Now, to clock our speed, pull out the wire speedometer tool and place it somewhere on the vehicle. Since the speedometer tool outputs a ridiculously precise answer that would never fit on a screen unless it was ridiculously large, we're going to place a round gate, which will round a number to more friendly status. Now, pull out the screen tool, make sure it's only one value, and that the font is bigger if there's only one value. You can set the value 1 text to whatever you want. Place it on the front of the vehicle where you can see it, and wire A from the round chip to the speedometer, and select the output of miles per hour. 
Now, for the screen to receive the value, we're going to have to wire A from the screen to the round chip, and then you're done. You have a perfectly working speedometer. Well, that's it for this tutorial. You have a nice car. Thanks for watching, and I hope this helps.